Hello all, welcome to the fourth session of the geometry series. Uh, in this session, we are going to talk about the surface areas and the volumes. Right, so before we get started, we need to understand what's a three-dimensional figure, right? Uh, up till now, we have talked about uh, shapes like uh, triangles, uh, squares, rectangles, and circles, and so on, right? All those were two-dimensional shapes. For example, let's say a rectangle would have length and the width, and so on, right? But what is the third dimension which comes into picture which makes a shape as a 3D figure and hence the surface area and volume come into play. That third dimension is nothing but the height of the figure. So let me take a quick simple example. So let's say that we have a uh, box like this, right? Now this box has the length, it has the width, and if we see it has the height as well. And the third dimension height is nothing which, that is the one which makes it as a box, otherwise it would have been a plain piece of paper, correct? So that's the first thing to understand what is the 3D shape. A 3D shape has three dimensions. Typically, height is the third dimension, which makes it as a 3D. Now, when we talk about the surface area, we need to understand there are two types of surface areas, right? The first is the total surface area of the figure. So for example, in this case of this box, right, we have the six faces, right? Uh, four sides and the top and the bottom. If we find the area of each of these six faces and add them together, that is nothing but the total surface area of this box, right? Um, the other type of surface area is the lateral surface area, which is the surface area of only of the sides. So essentially, we find the total surface area, suppose, and we subtract the top and the bottom, that is what it gives us the lateral surface area. So for example, the surface area of all these four sides is the lateral surface area, right? So there are two types of surface areas, total surface areas and the lateral surface area. Now let's quickly talk about the volume. Volume is nothing but it is, it gives the capacity contained within this box, the capacity contained within this three dimensional figure. And typically volume is given by the area of the base times the height. And obviously there are different types of shape. This is a simple example of a cube and we will take different examples as we move forward. So just to quickly reiterate what we have discussed so far is that Surface area and volume come into picture only when we're talking about the 3D figures, figures or shapes which have three dimensions, typically length, width, and height, right? So we're talking about 3D figures here. And the surface area is of two types, the total surface area and the lateral surface area. The lateral surface area covers the area of only of the sides. So basically the total surface area minus the top and the bottom will give you the lateral surface area, right? Volume is nothing but it gives the capacity contained by that 3D figure or by that shape, right? And it is given by the area of the base times the height of the shape. Uh, so let's take up some questions now. Okay, let's go ahead with this question. So we have a cube. Uh, the volume of the cube is given to be as 216 centimeter cube. And we have to find the difference between the total surface area and the lateral surface area of this cube, right? So as we discussed earlier, right, a cube is nothing but a three-dimensional shape, three-dimensional figure in which the three sides, length, width, and the height are the same, right? So in this case, for example, like this is the base of the cube, this is the top of the cube, and these are the four uh, uh, edges of the cube, right? So let's say that each of these sides, the length, the width, and the height is x. I mean, all of them are same because it's a cube. Now, we discussed in the past that volume of a 3D figure is nothing but the area of the base times the height, right? So what would be the area of this square base? X times X. So the area of the base is X square. So X square times the height, which is X, is equal to 216, correct? X square times X is X cube. So essentially x cube is equal to 216. You can take the cube roots on both sides, which gives you x is equal to 6. So each of the sides, the length, the width, and the height of this cube would be 6 centimeter. Now they're asking for the difference between the total and the lateral surface area. We discussed earlier that the lateral surface area is nothing but the total surface area minus the top and the bottom, correct? Hence the difference between the two would be nothing but the surface area on the top plus the surface area of the bottom. So basically the surface area of the top plus the surface area of the bottom, right? 
Now each of the sides is x, so which is equal to 6. So this is all 6 here, right? So the surface area of the top would be 6 times 6, which is 36, plus surface area of the bottom, which is again 6 times 6, which is 36. 36 plus 36 is 72. Hence 72 would be centimeter square would be the difference between the total surface area and the lateral surface area. Okay, let's take another question. So we have a cylinder here. It's a right circular cylinder. What it means is that the base as well as the top is a circle, right? And the volume of the cylinder is given to be as 250 pi. And the height of the cylinder is twice the radius here. And we have to find the area of the shaded portion. So this is the shaded portion here. And we have to find the area of the shaded portion. Now we discussed earlier that the volume of any three-dimensional figure is nothing but the area of the base times the height, right? Now the base is a circle with radius r. We know that the area of a circular circle is pi r square. So the area of the base, the circular base would be pi r square. That times the height would give us the volume of the cylinder. So pi r square times h is equal to 250 pi. Right? And the relation between h and r, r is also given height is twice of radius. So instead of h, we can write 2r here. So pi r square times 2r is equal to 250 pi. Right? Uh, we solve this and we get 2r cube. r square times r is r cube is equal to 250. We divide by 2 on both sides to get r cube. So we get r cube as to uh, 125 and we take the cube root on both sides to get r is equal to 5 right so the radius of the base or of the top is 5 5 units uh, hence the area of the base would be pi r square which is 5 times uh, pi r square right which is pi times 25 so that is the area of the base. The same would be the area of the top. So the total area of the shaded portion would be 25 pi plus 25 pi, which is equal to 50 pi. Okay, just to again quickly reiterate, right? The volume of the cylinder is given to us as 250 pi. And we know that the volume of any three dimensional figure is the area of the base times the height. In this case, the area of the base would be pi r square times height. So pi r square h, this actually becomes our kind of formula for the volume of the cylinder. So when we equated that and when we used h is equal to 2r, we could solve for r. We got the value of r as 5 and then we can find the area of this base which is pi r square. The same is the area of the top. We added both of them to find the total area of the total shaded portions. Okay, so let's take another question here. So we have a right circular cone. The height of the cone is h. The radius of the circular base is r, h is equal to 3 times r, the volume of the cone is given as 1000 pi, and we have to find the circumference of this base, right? Now the volume of the cone is given by 1 over 3 pi r square h, okay? If we notice in the previous question, we saw that the volume of his right circular cylinder is pi r square h, right? So the volume of the cone is one third of the volume of the cylinder. And if we see a little bit more closely, we kind of try to visualize the cylinder here, we will see that this cone is basically one third of the total capacity. Basically, there could be three similar cones which could fit in into this cylinder. And hence, the volume of the cone is one third of the volume of the cylinder. So one third of pi r square h, and that has been given to us as equal to 1000 pi, correct? Uh, h is equal to 3r, so we can plug the value of h here. So 1 over 3 times pi r square times 3r is equal to 1000 pi, right? Essentially what we're doing, we're trying to find the value of r because for finding the circumference of the base, we need r, right? The circumference is given by 2 pi r, right? As we have seen earlier. 
So essentially we are looking for R. Once we have R, we can find the circumference immediately, right? So let's come back to this here and solve for this. So pi R Q, R square times R is R Q is equal to 1000 pi. Right, we divide by pi on both sides. We get R cube is equal to 1000 and we take the cube root and R is equal to 10. So the value of R is 10 Hence, we can find the circumference as 2 times pi times 10 or 20 pi. So the circumference of the base in this case will be 20 pi. We can plug in the value of pi as 3.14 and multiply 20 by that or we can just say 25. Here, so we have a sphere uh, with a diameter of 5 cm. Okay, and we have to find the volume of this sphere, correct? Now the volume of the sphere is given by tau over 3 pi r cube. That is something which we got to either memorize, I mean, we can prove it, but for the purpose of these questions, either you will be provided this formula or something which you can be aware of, okay? Now, the diameter is given as pi centimeter. Radius we know is the half of the diameter. So the radius would be pi over two, correct? All we got to do is to plug this value of r here and solve for the volume. So the volume would be four over three times pi. r is like pi over two whole cube and we can solve it further to get pi cube over 8 because we have to cube both the numerator as well as the denominator, right? So pi cube and the denominator becomes 8 because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, right? And this is nothing but 4 pi to the power of 4 divided by 24 and you can cancel it out, finally leading to pi to the power 4 over 6. So this will be the volume of this sphere having a diameter of 5 centimeters. Obviously, pi 4 over 6 centimeter cube. Okay. Again, just to quickly review it, the volume of a sphere is given by 4 over 3 pi r cube. In this case, they gave us the diameter. Hence, we could find the radius because radius is half of the diameter. Just plug in the value here and solve for volume. Okay, let's take one last example here. So we have a cuboid as we shown on the board here. Uh, now, what is a cuboid? A cuboid is nothing but a rectangular prism. In fact, it's also called as a rectangular prism, right? So, rectangular prism. It is similar to cube. The only thing is that all the three sides are not the same. In a cube, we saw that all the three sides, the length, width, and the height are the same. But in a cuboid or in a rectangular prism, that's not the case, okay? Now, in this figure, ABCD is a square, this, this side, is a square and the area of ABCD is given as 25 centimeter square. The area of the base is given as 40 centimeter square. So this base, right, D, C, G, H, right, this base. The area of this base is given as 40 centimeter square and we have to find the volume of this rectangular prism or of this cuboid, correct? So ABCD is a square, the area is 25. So the area of this square is 25. So each of the sides should be the square root of 25, which is 5. So each of these sides will be 5. Correct? Because the area of the square is side times side. Hence, if we know the area, we can find the side by taking the square root of the area. Right? So each of these sides is 5. Now the area of base is 40. So the area of this rectangle, rectangular base is 40. It means that this side would be 40 divided by 5, which is 8. So this side would be eight, right? So we got the three sides. We got the, let's say, length, we got the width, and we got the height. We can find the volume length times width times height. So the volume in this case would be five times five times eight, which is five times 40 or 200 centimeter cube. Right? So that is the volume of this rectangular crest. Hey folks, hopefully you liked the video and it gave you a good perspective in terms of uh, what are the 3D figures, what is the third dimension which comes into picture, uh, what is surface area, what are the two different types of surface area, the little surface area and the total surface area, and what is the volume, right? Uh, volume is nothing but the capacity contained within that three-dimensional figure 
and it is typically calculated by the area of the base times the height of the figure. If you like the video, please do like and subscribe. See you in the next session.